Hello everyone and welcome to MATLAB and Control Engineering Tutorials. In this tutorial, we provide a basic introduction to Level 1 MATLAB S functions and we explain how MATLAB S functions can be used to simulate dynamical systems in Simulink. As a test case, in this tutorial, we explain how to simulate a dynamical system given by this state space model. In this state space representation, x1 and x2 are state space variables, u is the external input or the control input, and k1 and k2 are the system parameters. Some of you who are familiar with dynamical systems will immediately recognize that this is a pendulum model. Okay, let's immediately start with implementation. Luckily, we don't need to write S functions from scratch. MATLAB provides S function templates. To open the S function template, we need to type open and then over here under single quotation, we need to type S F U N T M P L. Again, S F U N T M P L. And note over here that the last letter is not number one, it is actually L. And if we press enter, the template will be opened. And here it is. The next step is to provide the name to our S function. Consequently, we need to modify this name. I will call the name simply as function 1s. Then I need to save this template as a new file. Consequently, I will click on save, save as, and don't save the function file in this default folder. Create a new folder somewhere on your C or D drive. So over here on my C drive, I have a special folder where I keep all of my test files and I'll save it over here. Now, here it's very important that you choose the proper name. Namely, the name of the file should match the name of the function. Consequently, since over here the name of the function is function 1s, the name of the file should also be function 1s. So let's do that. function 1s and press enter. Okay, let's continue. What is the purpose of MATLAB as functions? MATLAB as functions have many purposes and many different applications. In this particular tutorial, we will use MATLAB as functions to simulate dynamical systems in Simulink. Namely, as you will see in the sequel, we can define the right-hand side of our, of our dynamical system in MATLAB as function. In addition to this, we can define initial conditions and other simulation parameters. Let's learn how to do that. First of all, let's notice what do we see over here. The input to the MATLAB as function is t, this is the time, x is the state, u is the external input, and flag is the internal variable that's used to simulate our system. Later on, we are going to embed this S function inside of a Simulink block. However, to simulate our dynamical system, we need to specify the initial conditions. Namely, if we look again at our dynamics, we can see that this system is of the second order and consequently we have two initial conditions. We need to specify the initial condition for x1 and the initial condition for x2. Consequently, in our MATLAB script, I'm going to add two additional input parameters over here. One will be called x01 and the second one will be called x02 x01 is the initial condition for x1 and x02 is the initial condition for x2. For the time being, you can skip these comments and now if I go all the way here, you'll see the switch statement on the line 102. Let me explain the purpose of this switch statement. Since we are going to use this s function in our simulink block, this flag variable is used to simulate the system in Simulink. Flag will assume several different values. 
First of all, it's going to take the value of zero. And consequently, over here, we have the specific case when flag is equal to zero. When flag is equal to zero, this function over here will be called. Now, let's search where is the definition of this function. Press Control F and search the definition. And here it is. This function is used to initialize our simulation. Namely, it's used to set how many inputs, states, and outputs we have, as well as to initialize the initial states and some additional parameters. Now, over here, since we are passing to our S function the initial conditions, we need to modify a few things. First of all, we are not going to simply call this function without any input parameters. We need to provide the input parameters. And these input parameters are actually x0, 1, and x0, 2. So let's copy over here and go to the case statement, case 0, and paste x0, 1, and x0, 2. Good. Next, we need to modify the definition of this function. So if you go now again, control C, control F, click over here, and again, modify the definition. Oops, here I made an error, x01 and x02. Good. Now everything matches perfectly. Next, we need to define this function. First of all, don't touch this line. Leave this line as it is. How many continuous states we have? That is, this variable num continuous states is the number of continuous states. If we look at our state space model, we can see that we have two states. Consequently, over here, the number will be two. How many discrete states we have? Well, we don't have any discrete state since our system is continuous time Consequently, leave zero over here. How many outputs we have? Hmm, very interesting. Over here, we have complete freedom to choose outputs. In our case, we are going to specify two outputs, and we are going to consider both x1 and x2 as outputs. How many inputs do we have? Well, let's look at our model. We have only a single input. Consequently, over here, specify one. How many direct feed-through terms we have? We don't have a direct feed-through term in our dynamics and consequently specify zero. Then, number sample times, leave it as one. This means that we are going to use the default simulink simulation time. Here, we need to initialize the initial conditions. That is, we need to specify x01 and x02 to be the initial conditions and we pack them and group them together inside of this vector x0. And if you go down, that's it. Good. That is, we have precisely defined the function that initializes our simulations. Good. Let's go all the way up and let's consider next case. Okay. Case number one. Case number one is used to define the right-hand side of our differential equations. Namely, after flag assumes zero, that is, this is beginning of our simulation, flag will take value one. Flag one means that we are actually simulating our system. Good. So let's see what do we have over here. Let's modify the definition of this function. Copy the name of the function, search it over here, and here it is. This function defines the right-hand side of our equation. Let's see the right-hand side. Here it is. First of all, we need to define k1 and k2. So let's type over here. k1, let's assume value of 1, and for k2, let's assume value of 1. Next, we need to specify the right-hand sides. That is, we need to define the derivatives of x1 and x2. So let's type dx1, which stands for the derivative of x1 with respect to time, is, let's see, our model, x2. Now, note that this function has three input parameters. The input parameter t is time, x is the state vector, and u is the input to the system. 
Consequently, over here, we need to type x of 2. This means that x1 dot is equal to x2. Let's now specify x2 dot, dx2 dot is, let's now see our model, minus k1 sine x1. Good. Minus k1 multiplying sine of x1. Good. Then we have plus, let's see, k2 multiplying u, plus k2 multiplying input u, and that's it. The output of this function is a row vector containing the derivatives of x1 and x2. Consequently, the output will be dx1, comma, dx2. And that's it. Let's save this and let's continue. Next, let's go back to switch case statements. So if you go all the way up over here, we will see that currently we are at case one and we have defined the function computing the right-hand side of our state space model. Case two is not used in our simulation since case two applies to discrete time systems. Over here, we need to specify the outputs. That is, this function over here specify the outputs of our simulation. So let's do that and let's define the outputs. Let's click here, control F, and let's find the output. So what are the outputs? The outputs are simply the state X. Consequently, erase here and type X. And that's it. Save this and let's continue. Let's go back and let's see where we stopped. Case 3 is the output. Do we need some other cases over here? Well, let's see. Case 4 is not used in our simulation and case 9 is not used in our simulation. And that's basically it. Let's now double check everything and let's make sure that everything is defined properly. First of all, we are passing x01 and x02 as, in, as input parameters to our simulation. Then let's see again, case zero, go back, find the function. This function initialize our simulation. We have two states. We don't have discrete time states. We have two outputs. We have a single input. We don't have a direct feed through term and we are using the simulink simulation time. Over here, we are specifying the initial conditions. Good. Next, let's go to case one. This function defines the right-hand side of our simulation. Consequently, over here, we specified k1, k2, the right-hand side of our model, and we are returning the first derivatives. That's it, simple as that. And finally, let's see other cases. Let's see the output function and double check that this is precisely defined. Here it is, we're returning the state. Good. Now, let's save this function and let's continue. The next step is to add the folder in which this function is saved to the MATLAB path. This is a very important step since if we don't do so, Simulink will have problem to access this function. To do that, click on Home, then click on Set Path, click on Add with subfolders and locate where your folder is. In my case, the folder is here on C and it is the, it's given over here, select folder, click on close. And usually here I press no, since I want to keep this configuration only in this particular instance of running MATLAB. So I will click on no. Although I clicked no, this folder is still in the MATLAB path. Also, a good idea is to make sure that the folder is, can be seen over here. You can simply click here on C and find your folder. Good. The next step is to start Simulink. So let's do that. Type here Simulink and press Enter. This will start. After starting Simulink, click on blank model. And let's start with modeling. 
The first step is to add an S function block to our Simulink simulation. To do that, double click here and search for S function and click over here. Next, expand this block over here, double click on the block and let's change here the parameters. First of all, we need to specify the S function name. Over here, you need to specify the name of the function you just defined. What's the name of the function? Well, if you don't remember the name of the function, simply go to MATLAB and verify it. The function name is function 1s. Okay, to verify that you have correctly entered this name, simply click here on edit, and if the name is correct, you should be directed to the function definition. So here it is. This is good. Let's go back. And let's go back to our Simulink model. Next, we need to specify the input parameters to our function. We just need to specify two additional input parameters, namely x01 and x02. That is, we need to specify the initial conditions. So the initial conditions can be, for example, 1 and 0. And you can enter them by using comma. And that's it. That is, this simulation will simulate our pendulum for x1 is equal to 1 and for x2 is equal to 0. And click on OK and that's it. Next, we need to provide the input. Over here, for simplicity, we will provide a constant input. Double click here and search for constant. Here it is. Double click on the constant and let's assume, for example, 0 0.1. And click OK and then connect this, the output of this block to the input of our S function block. Next, we need to plot the results. To plot the results, we need to use the scope. There are several ways to plot the results. First of all, let's separate the results into two components. We are doing that since the output is x and x consists of two states. So let's double click here and search demia, demux or demux, however you like to pronounce it. And let's connect the inputs and outputs. Here it is. Let's double click and search for scope. Connect this part. Then again, let's do scope. Connect this part. Now, this scope over here will print the simulation results corresponding to x1, and this scope will print or plot the simulation results corresponding to x2. However, we need an additional scope. I will double click here, and I will type scope, and this scope will plot on the same graph both x1 and x2. Here it is. Looks perfect. Good. Let's over here change the simulation time, for example, 20 seconds, and let's click on Run. And let's hope that everything is properly defined. And here it is. OK. Let's double click here to see both x1 and x2. Here it is. Looks beautiful. We can see over here that x1, which is represented by the yellow line, starts from 1, and x2, which is represented by the blue line, starts from 0. If you want to make sure that these are the actual colors, click on Tools, or better to see, let me see where is the legend, actually in View and Legend, and after some time you can see S function 1, which is the state 1, and S function 2, which is the state 2, and the colors are correct. Good. Then, if you want to see separate plots for x1, you will click here. And if you see, if you want to see the separate plot for x2, you will click over here. And that's it. In this video tutorial, you learn how to simulate dynamical systems by using one level S functions in MATLAB. That's all for today and see you in the next video tutorial.